I've made quite a few videos critiquing and exposing different pet tubers, but now it's time to turn the table and expose some of you. The animal community is known to be a very toxic place, and while I do think some of the blame falls on the different animal YouTubers, I think much of it rests on the shoulders of us as viewers. So today, I want to be talking about and exposing those different toxic ideas and mentalities. I've also filmed this a little differently than I film most of my videos, and in the background, you're actually going to see me cleaning my rabbit's cage. So let me know what you guys think of this video and if you like this style. The first thing I want to talk about is the stigma around buying and rehoming animals. In regards to buying animals, I think it's really weird that a lot of pet tubers comment sections are just filled with people recommending different animals. I think like all of these points, this comes from a really genuine and good place because if you've had a really great experience with an animal, you obviously want to share it. But I think a lot of the other comments are just a little borderline weird where their comments like, I really want this animal but my parents won't let me have it, can you please get it? Or I have this animal and I want you to make care videos about it, can you please buy it? And I think that just comes from a really entitled place and I think it's extremely toxic to see. I feel like there's a lot of pressure for animal YouTubers to constantly be buying new animals in order to keep their channel relevant and their views up. There also seems to be a lot of comparison and almost a competition to see between who can get the most animals a month or the most different species. And again, I think this is really toxic when you're emphasizing the number of pets someone has or the number of new animals they have every month. I feel like this emphasis on the number is really translated into the viewers and I feel like everyone is acquiring animals very quickly. Animals are a huge commitment and it takes so long to even get acclimated to an animal's lifestyle and understand what their normal is. And when you're buying so many animals so quickly and you're constantly having new additions, regardless of how prepared you are and how much you've researched, when you have a large amount of animals coming in at one time, that's a lot of variables you're introducing and you haven't really learned the animal's behaviors well enough to know what is and isn't normal. And I just think this is really dangerous and it can result in a lot of sick animals. On the flip side, I also feel like there's a lot of stigma around rehoming animals. I think whenever animal YouTubers announce that they're going to be rehoming a pet, there's a lot of angry subscribers, which does make sense because rehoming animals is a huge decision and oftentimes it's quite sad and stressful for the animal. When you buy a pet, it is a lifetime commitment, but I feel like there's a lot of things that people aren't willing to address. The first is that researching an animal isn't the same as owning it. I think a lot of people assume that if you rehome an animal after you've only had it a few months, that means that you didn't thoroughly research it. And while this can be a reason, I think a lot of people just don't understand that research is not the same as experience and you can be 100% prepared for an animal but still have no idea what you're in for. At the same time, circumstances change so quickly and an animal that used to be perfect for you can quickly become overwhelming and just too much. They're just saying that the only constant thing in life is change. So even though we can try to plan to have our animals for their entirety of their lives, sometimes it's just not possible and rehoming is the best option. I really wish it wasn't so stigmatized because I really do feel that there was a time in the pet tube community where people were acquiring animals far too quickly. And I think many of these people might still be overwhelmed or I think they should be overwhelmed because if you have over 40 or 50 lives that are depending on you, even if some of them are just reptiles or insects, that's still a life and I think all life is valued the same. So I feel like that's just way too many animals to have and I wish rehoming wasn't so stigmatized so more animal YouTubers could consider it and then hopefully it can translate over to the viewers because I don't think rehoming is as bad as people make out to be and I think having an animal that you're caring for improperly or you're not caring for it to its fullest needs is a lot worse than rehoming an animal to a better situation where it's going to get the proper attention and love that it deserves. Another very toxic thing about the pet community is our obsession with numbers. The number of pets someone has seems to determine their validity. Either they have a lot of pets, which means they have a bunch of experience and everything they say is automatically more knowledgeable, or they have way too many pets and they're obviously not taking care of any of their pets properly, so we should completely ignore everything they're saying. At the same time, it seems to be that if you've had an animal for X number of years, that automatically makes you a better caretaker, which is extremely ridiculous. 
There are people that have had animals live out really full and long lifespans in completely improper care. Just because you've had an animal for so many years and they've been doing fine, it doesn't mean that what you're doing is right. Also, I discussed this more in my video called My Beef Was Pet Tube, but I hate that everyone is so obsessed with the minimum square feet for certain animals because the minimums are not something you should be aiming for and a lot of people assume that just because they've met the minimum, they're automatically doing a great job and just because someone's enclosure doesn't meet some minimum that they've met online, that they're a terrible owner. I think in my opinion, every enclosure should be far above the minimum but there are special circumstances and I think a lot of people just refuse to admit that. Another very toxic thing that I've been getting a lot of comments about is just comparing pet tubers, but especially comparing different people's animal cares. Of course, certain pet tubers just have higher standards of care in general, and while I think we can use that as a place of inspiration to aim for better care, I also think it's important to acknowledge that not everyone has the same resources, and some people just can't care for their animals in the same capacity. Now, I don't think this is an excuse to not give your animals the bare minimum and the care that they're all entitled to, but at the same time, not everyone can afford to completely spoil our animals with gourmet five-star living. I kind of have a series about one and the bunny, and I get a lot of comments from people telling me that Lorelai is such a better owner than me, and I do agree with that. Lennon is a single rabbit, Lorelai lives alone, and she makes a lot more money than I do, so of course Lennon is taken a lot better care of. I love watching her channel as a place of inspiration for me to learn to take better care of my rabbits, but at the same time, if I can't provide my rabbits everything that Lorelai can provide to Lennon, it doesn't mean that I'm abusing them. If it ever got to the point where I couldn't provide my rabbits the bare minimum that they needed to survive, and their health and their happiness was suffering, then I would obviously consider rehoming, but considering if you have an animal that's very healthy and happy, and just because you can't go above and beyond like some other people online, I don't think you should compare yourself to them and I don't feel you should feel discouraged about it. I also feel like a lot of these animal YouTubers are compared and plotted against each other, which is really sad. Everyone in the community is just people with an extreme passion for animals, and sometimes their content and their personalities might overlap. There's only so many ways you can make an All My Pets video or a Feeding My Animals video, and I think it's really sad when people get called out for copying just because their contents are similar. I also remember when Taylor Nicole Dean was really big in the pet community, almost every single female pet tuber was called a knockoff Taylor Nicole Dean or a Walmart Taylor Nicole Dean, which is just ridiculous. I think we should be supporting all the YouTubers because, again, everyone is just passionate about animals and how many crazy animal people are there really? There's only a couple of us, so we have to stick together. I also feel that in regards to comparison, there's a lot of viewers who compare the animals they're buying to the ones they've seen on the different pet tube channels. For example, if you buy a cowfish like Taylor Nicole Dean has, you're buying a cowfish, you're not buying cheese. Or I know there's a popular bird channel called Bird Tricks, and whenever they show their parrots, they kind of show the best parts of them. So when people buy an African Grey, they think that they're buying the same African Grey that they saw in the video, but in reality, every single animal is an individual and has so many different quirks. I also feel like people completely disregard the fact that animals are individuals, and instead of approaching care from their own opinions and building their own standpoints, a lot of times they're just copy pasting what these different YouTubers are telling them and replicating it exactly, which isn't necessarily bad, but if you're not catering to your animal's individual needs, you're not doing the best possible care that you could. It's so important in life to be an independent thinker, but especially in the animal community, because the animal community is so much bigger than people and feelings. We're talking about our pets and living beings that depend on us for their every needs, and these animals are independent thinkers. Your bunny is not going to act exactly the way Lennon acts or exactly the way Sterling acts. Your bunny is an individual and your care should really be suiting them. And if you're just mimicking your favorite YouTubers, your animal is going to be a disappointment because your animal is never going to live up to what you've seen online. And the last toxic thing that we as viewers tend to do is overly personify animals. Personification is when you attribute different human traits and personalities to your animals. 
A lot of times this is just really innocent and fun. Maybe you've seen your favorite fish YouTubers add different subtitles and commentary to their fish, which is adorable. But at the same time, I think a lot of viewers take this too far and they start treating their animals like people. I'm not saying that animals don't reserve the same love and respect humans do. I think all living beings are entitled to the same amount of care. But at the same time, it's important to remember that your animal is a completely different species and probably doesn't think and act the way you do. I think this is especially bad when it leads to improper care. I see a lot of people who get solitary animals like hamsters and hedgehogs and because they like having friends and they like having company, they assume that their animals want the same thing. So a lot of the times they'll either get a second hedgehog to live with their first hedgehog or they already have two hedgehogs and they want to try to introduce them together for play dates. And these animals are wired completely differently and they don't crave the same social interactions that we as people do. So when we see another human, we might think that it's our friend and we're really excited. But when a hedgehog sees another person or any solitary animal, they see it as an intruder in their territory and for them it's very stressful. A lot of times this can cause really bad fights and injuries, but other times you're just unnecessarily stressing your animal out because you think you're giving them something that they're lacking when it's something they never wanted. Like tarantulas, for example, love living in smaller burrows. And even though you might see a tarantula enclosure and think that it's way too small, that's actually what they feel secure in. So if you want to give a tarantula a massive 75 gallon tank, a lot of times that can just be overwhelming, especially if it means you're sacrificing the overall temperature and humidity for that. I think this mentality can often cripple you in forming a really strong bond with your animals and giving them the stimulating and enriching life that they deserve. For example, I scatter feed my rabbit, which just means I pretty much throw their pellets on the floor. And from an outside perspective, that can look like it's pretty careless. And I guess if you were doing that to a human child, that would be extremely rude and abusive. But when it comes to rabbits, rabbits are natural foragers. And in the wild, they pretty much spend their entire day searching and grazing on food. So even though we can't replicate that exactly in captivity, if we can encourage those type of behaviors, for example, by scatter feeding their food, where their food is all around their enclosure so they have to search and use their minds to actually find it, that's a lot more enriching and beneficial than just feeding their food in a bowl. A lot of people also refuse to feed their dogs the proper nutrition, and whether or not you should feed raw or kibble is very controversial, so I don't want to get into that. But there's a lot of people who refuse to feed either, and they just feed their dog the same food that they're eating and different table scraps, which is extremely unhealthy for the dog. And of course the dog likes it because animals love to be spoiled, but as a pet parent, we have to look at the bigger picture. It's not just about satisfying their instant craving now, we want them to be healthy for the long term. And having an extremely obese dog who only eats Indian food every single night is not healthy in the long run and your animal is going to regret it when they're like six years old and they can't even walk. Another thing I see, especially with exotic animals, is they buy these animals, but they expect it to act exactly like a dog or a cat. And dogs and cats have been domesticated for hundreds of years to live alongside humans. But there's a lot of people who just want something that's more exotic, like they really want a cuddly pet, but they don't want a dog. So then they go out and buy something like a cockatoo, which are one of the most cuddly species of parrot but cockatoos also have a lot of other issues and they don't do that well in captivity. They have very specialized needs, they're very big screamers, a lot of times if they don't get the proper attention they can feather pluck and people don't want to deal with these other inconveniences, they just wanted a snuggly pet that wasn't a dog. I think this frustrates me so much because I have rabbits and sugar gliders and these are pets that people constantly compare to dogs. People always say that sugar gliders personalities and the bond you have with a sugar glider is just like a dog and I can definitely see where people are coming from because after having them a while you notice they do a lot of things that are quite dog like but at the same time they're completely different species and sugar gliders can take a really long time to bond and a lot of them never bond 100%. So if you're buying a sugar glider instead of a dog, but you're expecting all the dog characteristics, that's just a very unrealistic expectation to put on a sugar glider. Also, with the free-range rabbit movement, a lot of people are buying rabbits opposed to dogs and cats, 
which I think is really great. I think rabbits can make amazing house pets, but I think people don't realize how varied rabbit personalities are. And even though some of them can act exactly like a dog or a cat, there are many that won't. I think a lot of people also don't realize that rabbits have different needs. For example, you can probably leave cords lying around with a dog or a cat, but you can't with a rabbit. Rabbits also don't 100% litter box train, so you have to be okay with just sweeping up different poops because they often end up outside of the litter box. Also, I see a lot of people free roaming their rabbits with their dogs and their cats, and of course you can free roam dogs and cats together in the same household, but even that has so much potential to go wrong. There are so many horror stories of dogs killing other dogs that are the same size, of cats killing dogs. There's just so much to go wrong between cats and dogs cohabitating and just even cats and cats and dogs and dogs that I personally would never let my rabbits be 100% free roam if I had a dog or a cat. Dogs and cats are predators and even though rabbits do really well and they have really big personalities and they act all tough, they are extremely sensitive and at the end of the day, if a predator were to attack them, they are a prey animal and that could potentially kill them. So those were some of the toxic things that I wanted to point out. Let me know what you guys have noticed as toxic in the pet community because I think that this video could definitely use a follow up or two. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.